Today marks a milestone of sorts here in the nation's capital. The Chevy Volt has arrived at the headquarters of Washington power company Pepco. Upon arrival, the Volt received an electrical fill-up, I guess that's what you'd call it, at one of Pepco's newly installed charging stations. The power company now says it will purchase 10 volts from Chevrolet and use those vehicles to study how charging electric cars will impact the grid. This charging station in the parking garage of Pepco is one of eight here in the D.C. area. General Motors plans to help the district with a network of similar charge points throughout the city. It's really uh, the beginning of a partnership uh, where we're going to learn uh, what it's going to take uh, to really be able to expand uh, the acceptance of, this, of these vehicles, uh, uh, certainly here in the city, but also I think beyond in our service territory, and understand the implications to the electric grid itself, uh, because obviously when these cars show up, they're going to be looking for a place to plug in and recharge. We're working with Pepco primarily on public and workplace charging. The vehicles are coming to market the end of this year. Not only GM's product, but other products will be in the market by the end of the year. What we need is to enhance the customer experience. And in that, we need to be able to offer home charging solutions as well as workplace and public charging solutions. So here we have a charging system that's set up in a workplace garage. As for why the Volt is here in Washington this week, this is the eve of the annual DC Auto Show. Unlike past shows when reporters had to stay at arm's length from the vault, Chevrolet is now letting journalists take the EV for a spin. Among the reporters offered a test drive recently, Clean Skies, Lee Patrick Sullivan. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2007 Chevrolet Volt concept. Well, it's been three years since General Motors announced it was getting back into the electric car business with the announcement of the Chevy Volt. And in the past 36 months, the car went from a Corvette-looking concept car to something that more resembles a Chevy Cobalt. And after months of being told by security guards not to touch the Volt, I finally got to take it for a spin. Now the car passed the first test. Unlike the Chevy Cobalt, the Volt had enough leg and headroom for my six foot four frame. And once in the car, there's a feature similar to the Cadillac CTS with a video touchscreen display and backup camera. Now the gauges on the dashboard display are accessible through a spinning toggle switch similar to the wheel on an iPod. Like other electric cars we've driven in the past year, pickup was great and the ride silent. But when Chevy first announced the Volt back in 2007, they stood alone in the electric car world. Now with Tesla, Fisker Automotive, the Nissan Leaf, Chinese automaker BYD, and just about every other OEM that can spell EV coming out with some sort of electric or plug-in hybrid, it makes you wonder, did GM miss its opportunity to capture market share the same way that the Prius did for the hybrid market? The folks at GM say, the more, the merrier. It's a bit grat gratifying because in the beginning there was a lot of skeptics about electric vehicles and about General Motors' uh, commitment to electric vehicles. Uh, but there's a lot of competition out there and I think that's great because not only does it help uh, make a robust supply base, uh, which will give us economies of scale down the road, but it gives customers some competition and some good choices. It makes us all better. And unlike the Tesla, the Nissan LEAF or BYD's E6, the folks at Chevy point out the Volt has an extended range capability. Its onboard gasoline powered generator allows the car to go for more than 300 miles without needing gas or electricity. And as we found out, the changeover from battery power to gasoline generator happens seamlessly and on the fly. So now it's running on gasoline. Yep. The sound of the onboard computer and the four cylinder generator kicking in, the only indication it was switched to gasoline power. And that's what engineers at Chevy are hoping for, the driver to experience a car the same way it would a normal internal combustion vehicle. We're just hoping that there's a positive customer experience is the main thing. Um, you know, there's a lot of new stuff with the charging, the plugging in. You know, we'll have to see, we get some customer feedback on, on plugging a vehicle in and that kind of thing. General Motors has not announced a price for the Volt, but industry insiders say with tax incentives it will be about $32,000 which is about 10,000 more than a comparable gasoline-powered car. Now, after driving us around the track a few times, pretty much the Volt feels like just a, a normal sedan. And you'll get your chance to drive one if you live in California, Michigan, or here in the nation's capital, because they will be available in those markets first. In Washington, D.C., Lee Patrick Sullivan, Clean Skies News.